love to know that. So here I have Miss Victoria with me. So she's going to read um, any of the comments or questions that you might have. Don't hesitate to ask questions. As we go through this, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have about the flower shop or about any of the things. Um, today I am making an arrangement for an order. Um, this is a large arrangement. It's actually going to be a $200 vase arrangement. It's for a birthday. And so they requested several types of flowers and then they said just make it beautiful. So I am going to use carnations. I'm going to use roses. I'm going to use sunflowers and what was the third? Tulips. Those were the four types of flowers that they said that they requested in this arrangement. And then they said I could use whatever else. They just wanted it big and showy. And so that's what we're going to give them. Starting out with a vase. Um, this is a vase that I am not even sure where it came from. Um, we may have just picked it up on sale somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where it came from, but it's beautiful. I love the color, and I think it's a really nice gift in and of itself. It's actually a hand-blown um, glass vase, and it has all the little bubbles in the glass. So it's just really pretty, or I think it is. And green really goes with most everything. Everything going okay? Okay, so I'm going to start out by adding a little bit of greenery. So my greenery choices today, I have Italian Ruscus, which is just so big and show, it's just a showy foliage. I have Portocorpus, Weeping Portocorpus. We have some Silver Dollar Eucalyptus, and then I have Green Dragon. Um, I'm going to start out with my Weeping Portocorpus. And I'm going to take and remove some of the foliage that's on the bottom of the stem. Is everything going okay? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just making it look better. Oh, <laughs> thanks. Thank you, ma'am. So I'm going to start out with um, a, a couple of stems of the Weeping Porticorpus. I pulled off some of the um, foliage that was going to fall. My mouth won't work. That was going to fall below the water line. I'm going to set this to the side. If we don't use it in this arrangement, we will use it in another arrangement. So I'm going to set it to the side. Don't throw away good stuff, if at all possible. I'm going to take my knife, and this is a very woody stem, so it's a little harder to cut with my floral knife. There we go. And I dropped it down into the vase, so I pulled that out. And I'm going to tuck that right into the water. And I'm just removing any of that foliage that might fall below that water line. Um, Allison on Facebook says, Hi, Monty and Victoria and all our flower friends. Beautiful vase. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, Allison. We're so glad you're here with us. Uh, Chris on YouTube. Chris says, Good afternoon. And Miss Mary Lou says, Hi, Monty. Hello. Hello, friends. Welcome, welcome. Oh, and Miss Sue Dean from Facebook says, Hey, Monty and Victoria. Hey, Miss Sue Dean. Thank you for being <laughs> here. So I'm just adding a little bit of foliage to this arrangement. Um, you can see that I'm trying to do a little better with not using quite so much leather leaf. I mean, yellow, leather leaf is a wonderful foliage, but I don't want to overgreen my arrangement. Now I'm going to say that this is a very large mouth container, and so I am hoping that without me gritting it, I'm not going to have any issues but we are going to see. And if we have issues, we're gonna pull it all out and we're gonna try again. It's not the end of the world. So I have taken my porta corpus and I've tucked it into the vase and I'm kind of doing a grid in the bottom with my um, foliage stems. I'm gonna save the, the rest of this foliage for the last part of the arrangement. I'm gonna come in with my hydrangea. So this hydrangea, if I can very carefully pull the sleeve off, this is called a unicorn hydrangea. Now, I am actually going to move this arrangement and take this wooden piece off my table. It makes the arrangement so high and it's hard to see over it. And I really like to see over it. Okay, let's try this again. I'm gonna take these hydrangeas. So these are called unicorn hydrangeas. I dropped my knife on the floor. 
let's see how many things can happen in one arrangement, right? This is called a unicorn hydrangea. It's actually a dyed hydrangea. If you know me, I'm not a dyed person. I don't love dyed materials, but this really looks more like an antique hydrangea. It's really very pretty. Now there are a couple of, couple of um, blooms that have little bumps on them, so I'm just going to pull those off. I'm gonna take my floral knife and I'm gonna cut that stem at an angle. Now I'm gonna remove, I broke it when I did that. I'm gonna remove any of that extra foliage. I'm gonna cut that one more time and I'm gonna tuck that right in. Now I'm using it down toward the base of this arrangement. It's going to help me with a grid. Now I will have to say that this is one of my favorite hydrangeas. Um, it's just beautiful. I'm cutting it at an angle and I'm tucking that hydrangea right on the lip of that vase. Um, Allison asks, uh, asks, what did you say this arrangement was for? Did it, oh, is this for a birthday? I'm not exactly sure. It's an order. And they just wanted something large and showy. So that's what we're going to do. Large and showy. Okay. So I've taken my hydrangeas and I've placed them all the way around the vase. Okay. Next, what I'm going to do is I am going to come in with kale. So kale is, this is called an ornamental kale. Um, I just think that this lacy kale is so, so pretty and I thought it would be perfect with my hydrangeas and I've got some, some other colors in here that I thought it would be pretty with. You don't see this very often. We actually got this um, from the local wholesaler and I just thought it was beautiful. So I'm going to take these stems, I'm going to put them down low in this arrangement like I did the hydrangeas. They're just going to kind of be low. See how pretty that purple is? I don't work with kale a whole, whole lot. Um, it is a big bloom, and so it's kind of hard to work with, um, but ooh, it makes me happy when we get to use it. So you can see I just kind of tucked that kale in. Now the reason I'm using my lower blooms first is because I need a grid to be able to make my taller blooms stand up. So I've used my hydrangeas, my ornamental kale, and a little bit of foliage so that my blooms, my other flowers will stand up. Next, I'm gonna come in with some Bells of Ireland. Get your little self back in there. Hi, Miss Mary Lou, and Miss Barbara Easley says hello on Hello, YouTube. hello, welcome, welcome, friends. Um, Miss Jill says hello, and Miss Kathy says, love it when I get to catch you live. So glad you're here with us. Thank y'all for watching. So I'm taking these bells of Ireland, and I'm pinching the tips right out of the top of those bells. Um, and that's just a preference of mine to remove the tips out of the bells of Ireland. It just, I just like it better. Um, not necessary, so if you like those tips in there, you go right ahead and leave those in. Now I am taking these bells and I'm kind of putting them off to the side because I have plenty of lime flower. I'm going to use other lines in here. Um, Allison says, love the texture that the lacy kale gives. Isn't it pretty? It's just different and that's what I really like about it. It's not something that you see every day. And I like that. Malicia Sunflowers Spurs asks, what's the sprigly foliage? Um, the, this foliage here, would that be it? I think so. So this is Weeping Porticorpus. Um, I tell you, it grows as a shrub um, in South Mississippi. I have never seen it growing this far north, um, but I have seen it growing in South Mississippi, kind of on the coast. Um, but it's a really pretty, it's just a pretty foliage. It's long lasting and easy to use. It's just so pretty. Next I'm gonna come in with some beautiful blue delphinium and we're gonna tuck our blue delphinium over to the opposite side. Um, Bell's Bliss Design says, hey ladies, I missed y'all yesterday. Glad to catch today's class. So glad you're here, <laughs> friend. Welcome, welcome. And Miss Barbara on YouTube says, my wreath is even more beautiful in person. Thank oh, you. Oh, I'm so glad. Thank you for letting us know. Okay, so there's our blue delphinium tucked in. 
Next, we're gonna come in with some stock. So I will say, I really, I'm a stock, I, I'm a fan of stock. I really, really like it. It is so hard to see y'all on the other side. I'm gonna slide it over for a second. <laughs> This, I will say, is probably my favorite variety. This is a mauve colored stock. Mauve is a, I would say it's a cross between a purple and a pink. Um, if you remember far, far enough back, I can remember in the 80s, my mama's favorite color to decorate with was mauve and powder blue. It was just the colors. Um, and it was kind of a country decor. Um, but this is so, so pretty. Such a, and it's a hardy, hardy stock. Um, this variety just tends to be pretty hardy and night is just beautiful. I'm gonna take this stock, I have three blooms of stock and I'm gonna kind of tuck it down here in the front. Another thing about stock is it just smells so pretty. There is my mauve colored stock. Um, next, we will come in with our sunflowers. So the sunflowers are something that, um, that our client asked for. So we are gonna tuck three stems of sunflowers in. I'm trying to keep everything in my bucket, not falling on the floor over here. Um, so I'm going to look at my sunflowers and I'm going to find the smallest bloom to the largest bloom. And what's funny is this bloom is perhaps the largest, but it's closed. So you can't tell that it's the largest. Um, so I may put it at the bottom, although visually it's going to be hard to tell that it's the largest at this moment. I'm going to take that stem. I'm using my floral knife and I'm just cutting that stem at an angle and I am going to tuck my sunflowers kind of in a cluster. And then I'm gonna tuck this guy down here. So there are our really pretty yellow sunflowers. Now my Bells of Ireland are kind of rocking and rolling, so I'm gonna adjust them a little bit. Okay, next we're going to come in with some carnations. Now I realize carnations just get such a um, terrible, um, such terrible reviews, and I think a carnation is one of the prettier flowers. I just love it. I just think it's a really pretty flower. It lasts forever and ever and ever, and it really comes in some great colors. I'm going to take this carnation. It's a little tight, so I'm going to hold that calyx between my thumb and my forefinger, and I'm just going to brush that carnation. Now, what I'm doing is I'm opening that bloom, so you can kind of see the difference in this bloom and the one that I just brushed, it causes it to just open right up. Um, now you have to hold that bloom right there at those petals, just like this. And the reason you're doing that is because if you start brushing this flower and not hold his head like that, you're gonna pop his little bloom off. And that just hurts my feelings when you pop a bloom off. So you very carefully hold him in your hand and just brush each of those carnations. Now, I will tell you, I would not have chosen carnations for this arrangement unless they were requested. And it's strictly because some people just hate them, which hurts my feelings, but that's just the truth. And so therefore, they requested carnations, so we ordered some in. So I'm going to take these carnations and we're going to kind of cluster them over here on this side. Um, Chris Rye says, I'm growing stock this year and there's a stock called Vintage Brown and I believe it's that same color. It may be and this is just a gorgeous color, really, really gorgeous and the hardiest stock that I have ever put my hands on, quite honestly. It's really hardy. The stem is a really good stem size and it's just, it just holds up beautifully. We've used it in several weddings and I just think it's just so pretty.
there are our pretty carnation. Got my... Next, we are going to come, my nose is itching. We're gonna come in with these yellow roses and we used these yesterday. This variety is Stardust. Is that right, Victoria? It's Stardust. Somebody asked yesterday on the video what this variety was. It's called Stardust. I like the little frilliness of the le of the petals, if you can see that. It's got like little, kind of little lacy petals. I'm going to take each of these balloons and I'm going to wire them. Uh, Miss Linda says, just joining in from Southeast Virginia. And Miss Liz says, beautiful, love the arrangement. Thank you, thank you. I am actually going to go and get another yellow rose because that one's bumped and bruised. Um, thank you so much. I think I'm going to get some myrtle too because I'm more, I'm needing some, some off in that center to hold these flowers in place. So I'm just taking each of these blooms and I am, this is the little swollen part called the calyx. I'm just taking this little piece of wire, putting in that, in that calyx and just twisting that wire around the stem. One of these roses, um, it rode the box. And so what I mean by that is the tips of the rose, like right here, the petals right here, rode the side of that box. And so it bruised all those petals really bad. So you can't use it. It's hard for you to see, but you can't use it. So I'm not gonna, did you grab me one rose? I'm sorry. Oh, you need one rose? Uh, yes, ma'am, a yellow, please, ma'am. Okay, I'm going to take some of this myrtle and I'm going to work on the center of this arrangement. Now where my problem lies with this container, sorry y'all, my nose is itching so bad, I apologize. This container's mouth is really, really wide. And so the width of this mouth is causing my flowers to want to list to the side. So I'm, thank you dear, thank you. So I'm taking some myrtle and I'm going to fill up some of the space in the center there and I'm going to give this arrangement just a little bit of height. I still have a good many flowers to use so we're going to get, it's going to get fuller but. Miss Linda says hello from Ashland, Virginia and Miss Jeannie says hello from coast of North Carolina, beautiful as always. Thank you, thank you, welcome. We're so glad you're here. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this arrangement so you can see these flowers are kind of all the way throughout the arrangement. Um, Chris R asks, once you get a flower order, how long before you have to use them? It depends on the type of flowers, Chris. It really depends on the type of flowers. So, some flowers are longer living than others. Because I have a really good cooler um, and I process my flowers correctly, depending on the type of flower, they can last up to three weeks and still be beautiful and perfect blooms. Um, most of the time, I would say, it, I mean, it's really all in the flowers. It's all in the type of flowers. Um, Roses can stay in a cooler and be sold within, I would say, 12 days. And it just depends on where you order your flowers from also, as to whether they're going to last long or not. We have a few people saying stuff. Um, on <laughs> saying stuff, okay. <laughs> on Facebook, Miss Linda asks, or says, thanks for the tips on gift baskets on YouTube. Oh, you're so welcome. You're so welcome. Um, Miss Nina says, hello from rainy Louisiana. Just tuned in. What is this beautiful arrangement for? Um, this arrangement is going to go out tomorrow. I want to say it might be a birthday. I'm not exactly sure. It's just an order that was placed um, to go out in the morning. Um, Cyrus on YouTube says, I love your channel. I am a floral design high school teacher in Hughes Springs, Texas, and I love your videos. I use your videos all the time in my classroom. We love your design. Oh, I am so glad. Thank you so much. Um, I'm so glad 
glad you're learning stuff and it makes it easier to teach. Um, that, that makes me smile. Thank you so much. Um, also on YouTube, Miss Melanie asks, do you have tacky glue or glue for glitter spray? Sprinkle some glitter over those bruised petals and now the rose is perhaps sellable. So smart. I would have never thought of it. Thank you. That's so smart. Never even thought about it. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the tip. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, so I kind of did a line of yellow roses over here. One, two, three, four. Let's touch this one here. Um, Bernice on Facebook says, this is beautiful. What do you call it? Um, I, I, we don't have a name. <laughs> we have not named it. It's just a, a mixed arrangement. It's one of our um, extra large mixed arrangements. Um, and it doesn't have a name yet, so we can come up with a name. Okay, so they asked for tulips, so I chose yellow tulips just because they're just so dang pretty. Um, where should we put the yellow tulips? Probably over here beside the stock. So I'm going to take my tulips. Tulips are short flowers, and so I always find when you use tulips in a large arrangement, they're hard to really show up. Now the one fun thing about a tulip is tulips continue to grow after they're cut and placed in water. And so they'll continue to put length on their stems, which I think is the most interesting thing in the whole world. Um, so these will continue to grow and start to um, kind of fall out of the arrangement or look as if they're kind of falling out of the arrangement. But right at first, they have to be tucked deep into the arrangement. But they will continue to grow. So I've tucked my tulips kind of in a little cluster. And that's five stems of yellow tulips just kind of tucked in a little cluster. I also have some really pretty, um, these are a purple colored calla lily. This is a, um, a mini calla. Callas come in a standard and a mini. One of the neat things about calla lilies is a standard calla, which is the big calla. It's a really big bloom, like it's bigger than my hand. The bloom itself is. They only come in white. And the mini callas come in lots of colors. They do come in white, but they come in purples and pinks and kind of a deep, deep, almost even a black. It's a plum color. Um, lots of yellows, greens, all colors. Lots of pretty colors. Um, I just thought these callas were just fun and something different to tuck into this arrangement. I'm gonna cut down this one bell real quick because he is all up in my face. So I'm gonna trim him and tuck him back in. Okay, I think my callas I'm gonna leave long and we're gonna come out over here on this side. So you see that's a pretty good length on the stem. I'm gonna cut that stem at an angle and I'm going to tuck him and I'm gonna leave him kind of, kind of dripping out, out this side of the arrangement. Um, Cassie says, watching from Sydney, Australia, your flowers are always so bright and perfect. Oh, thank you so much, friend. We're so glad you're here with us. Um, Mary Elizabeth Ferris says, hey, sweet friend. Mary Elizabeth Ferris, I love you. Okay, calla lilies are tucked in. So, last and then we'll add some greenery, is this beautiful purple Veronica. So Veronica, <laughs> I have said that it almost looks like a little foxtail, or every once in a while the tips will kind of be flat, so it even looks like a mermaid tail. But see how it kind of gives you a little, a little tail effect? Veronica comes in several different colors, but this purple is just so pretty. I don't know what it is about purple this season that makes me happy, but purple is just a really great added color to any arrangement. I'm going to put this in the top. We're going to um, leave it kind of long and put it in the top. So I'm going to take my stems and cut it at an angle. And I am just going to tuck this happy, happy Veronica over here. So you can see as I turn, I'm going to turn this arrangement for you. I still have greenery to add, but 
it almost looks at, like a garden. It's really got clusters of the different types of flowers. And so we have yellow tulips. We have the unicorn hydrangeas, which is actually a dyed hydrangea. We have the yellow stardust roses. Isn't that right? Stardust, why that won't stay in my head. We have the mauve colored stock. We have purple mini callus. I'm gonna turn it around. We have beautiful sunny sunflowers. Bells of Ireland, those gorgeous carnations, which are just so pretty. Um, we've got kale, a lacy kale, Veronica, blue delphinium, and I think I said the Bells of Ireland. Did I say Bells of Ireland? I've got those bells tucked in there. And last, what we're going to do is add a little bit of this pretty foliage. So to me, there is something about foliage that just really makes an arrangement just so showy. Um, it really makes it look, to me, it's, uh, it pushes it over the top. So I'm, this is called Italian Ruscus. Now you have seen me work with Israeli Ruscus, but Italian is fantastic. You don't see me use Italian a whole lot and it's because it's a pricey foliage. You don't get a whole lot in a bundle and it costs a good bit. Like, I don't even know the price of a bundle. I don't know the cost, but I'll go look it up. But it's not cheap. Um, I wanna say, did I tell you that it's $3 a stem? Three or $4 a stem for one stem of greenery. So to me, that's hard to use, but when you're doing an arrangement this showy, I think it's okay <laughs> to, um, to add some fancy greenery to your arrangement. Now, I love the fact that this kind of gives us a quite a dramatic line. I move this bucket to the side so you can see. Um, Miss Linda says, I am so happy to hear a teacher using your videos because you are the best at describing mechanics to design. My oh. granddaughter wants to eventually do floral design, and I told her to watch all of your videos so she can learn so much from the master teacher. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I don't know if I'm a master teacher, but I do love what I do, <laughs> and I think that that really makes one a better teacher if they love what they do. Um, yeah, I don't know that I'm a master, but I do my very best, and I just teach you what I know. Um, and it's so fun. On. Are we going dark? Yeah. Give us just a second. We've got time. Don't worry. I'll fix it. She'll fix it. So our camera has a dark mode. So it takes just a second. It'll come back up. Come on, camera. Please come up. I told you. We're going dark for a second. If you can hear me, let me know. Yeah, they can. They can hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's going to take just a second for that. There. Is it coming back? It looks like it on the YOLO. Come on, friend. Come on, friend. You can do it. Please let me finish this arrangement. <laughs> Please let me finish this arrangement. I don't know how to fix them. See, that's why Owen shouldn't leave us. Uh, Unplug and plug back. Oh, you're right, that's the issue. I'm sorry, I forgot what it was. I forgot I did the wrong. No wonder it was taking so long. There we are, da -da! <laughs> <laughs> I promise, guys, we're gonna get this camera one of these days. We're gonna get this camera. I forgot. Yay, so yay, 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 we figured it out. It just took a second. So, lastly, but not least, we're going to finish off with some foliage. I've got still a little bit of this eucalyptus. Just taking it and I'm just going all the way around the edge of this container and tucking that eucalyptus right around the edge. <laughs> Everyone's saying yay! Yay! We're back! We're back! <laughs> Bless it. One of these days I promise we're gonna have this figured out. I'm just so glad that we figured it out. <laughs> I dropped a piece of greenery on the floor, so I'm going to pick that up. Um, Melanie Gomez says, I had a customer say that Veronica and his arrangement looked similar to a small Texas blue bonnet. <gasps> really? Well, there you go. I have. I guess I've never seen blue bonnets. 
I love Veronica. I'm so happy. Um, Julie says, thank you for showing how to wire roses and pull off the guard petals. I have a dozen roses from the grocery store, only $10, but they look like a million. Thanks Isn't to you showing me what Isn't it fun? Isn't it fun? It's so wonderful that you can take inexpensive product and make it look like it came right from the flower shop. Um, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you're learning things. Thank you for letting me know. I do want to say one more thing about roses, and I don't know if it's probably been a while. Will you check that text and make sure that's not Lynn sitting outside? Um, it's been a while since I've talked about roses and how to choose the perfect rose when you go and buy roses for yourself. So if you go to the grocery store and you buy a bundle of roses, I want you to take that rose and I want you to pinch it. I'm going to pull this rose out to show you. I want you to, if I can get him out of the arrangement, I want you to take this rose. Now he looks like he's pretty open. But if you'll catch him right here down at the base of that rose and you'll pinch it, if it is firm, you can purchase those roses. If it's soft and all the petals kind of come in, don't buy it. It's not going to last as long. So I want you to always check when you're purchasing roses or even when you're going to cut them off the bush. Check it. If it's a hard rose, you can cut it and it'll last longer for you or you can purchase it and it'll last longer. Um, but it's just, it needs to be firm in that center of that rose. I find myself, if I'm ever at the grocery store and somebody has bought roses, <laughs> I'm the world's worst to say, sir, don't buy those. <laughs> Let me show you which ones to buy. I need to mind my own business. <laughs> But you'd hate for somebody to take something home that's not going to last. So I'm just taking, to finish off this arrangement, instead of using filler flower, I'm using a little bit of this green um, dragon. And I'm just tucking it in, and it just looks frilly and pretty. I am going to stick my hand down in this arrangement and work, it on, work that kale kind of higher into the arrangement. I had him kind of deep, so I pulled him out just a little so you could see how pretty he was, that lacy kale. And so as you're finishing up your arrangement, go all the way around. If something needs to be adjusted, adjust it. It's not going to hurt a thing for you to adjust it. Um, Mary Elizabeth says, looks just like a bouquet from a summer garden. I hear you. <laughs> And they're all saying it's beautiful. Thank you, thank you, thank you, friends. Thank you so much. Now, this arrangement can be made where you put all of the flowers all the way around. Um, where you take your carnations, and I had five stems of carnations, so they would go all the way through the arrangement. My callas would go all the way through. I just find quite often, if you will cluster like flowers together, it will make more of a statement. Um, and maybe that's just me. Um, but I feel like if they're clustered, you can really see them. Like, you can see those carnations so well. Um, you can see the bells of Ireland. They're really showing out. You know, so I, and it's really all in your preference. I don't think that there is a wrong way to make a beautiful arrangement. It's really all in your preference. Um, Miss Marguerite says, beautiful, looks like a fresh picked meadow. <laughs> Allison says, lucky recipient. And Miss Nina asks if you're going to add a bow. I am not going to add a bow. I don't know if you've noticed lately. I'm just not on a bow kick lately. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like it's just a dressier arrangement if it doesn't have a bow. My thoughts usually with a bow go to a birthday or kind of a celebration. Um, so I don't always add bows, um, but if you like bows, absolutely it would be perfect to add a bow. You can absolutely add a bow. Um, but I don't think bows are always necessary. I, lately I've just not been a bow person, which is, I. it kind of just depends on whether, <laughs> on how I feel that day as to whether it's going to get a bow or not. Any more questions, Miss Victoria? Um. 
I don't think so. Everyone's saying it's beautiful. I'm going to turn it around and kind of let you see all the way around. Miss Linda says a bow would take away from this arrangement. Yeah, I just, I, and it's just, I mean, you can, it wouldn't hurt it at all. <laughs> but it really just kind of depends on, on the designer. For our Valentine um, arrangements, we are not putting a bow on our Valentine arrangements this year. And the reason being is it just takes time to tie that many bows um, when you do. So our, our numbers on Valentine's is about 400 deliveries. And so if you had to put a bow on 400 arrangements, it's a lot of work and it's kind of pricey. And so I have felt like I would rather them get an extra flower in their arrangement versus a bow this year. We will put bows on all of our roses just because, I don't know, roses just need bows. I don't know why. Isn't it funny how you decide, you have it in your head what, what things need to be? Um, so roses will have bows, but arrangements will not this year. All right, guys. Thank you, thank you all so very much for being here with us this afternoon. I hope you have a wonderful evening. I will take a picture of this arrangement so you can see it up close. Um, and we will see you all tomorrow. I hope you have a great night. We'll see you real soon.